in terms of um, draw your own lot. So basically the, the way, especially if there's some US clients that's um, hopped on to this session, basically draw your own lot is meant to be, say for example, for a home builder, um, there's an estate that hasn't been loaded into Can I Build yet. There's some circa just, you know, over 2,700 now estates, but say there is a subdivision that just got done yesterday, a three lot subdivision or a 300 lot subdivision, and you're meeting a client, I understand that you need to be able to site right then and there. And um, so that's why in conjunction with some of our key clients, we've been, um, we've developed this feature to be able to draw that lot. Um, you're also able to use it in the situation where it's a proposed or hypothetical subdivision that um, someone might be thinking about, and you're able to sort of draw that based on a sketch of a lot that hasn't even, even been submitted. So it gives you that versatility. Um, so what I'll do is I'll jump to an address and let's just see how that looks. So let's, let's assume we've um, come to an address like this. And this is a subdivision that is yet to be um, loaded in, or you know, this owner is thinking of doing um, a project on this block or whatever might be the scenario. So on the right-hand side, you'll notice that there's a little wrench there. Now, if you hover over the wrench, you'll see four options. You'll see edit lot, subdivide lot, merge um, site and draw lots. So, and, and one thing I forgot to mention, I will touch on merge lots as well, um, but the two grayed out options, which is the edit and subdivide, those will be coming um, soon. Edit basically means edit the existing lot, um, which is self-explanatory. Subdivide lot will be able to just do, in theory, you'll be able to subdivide a 300 lot subdivision, but you will have to be close to insane to do it lot by lot. It is much more geared to the battle axe subdivision or the three lot subdivision where you're just quickly saying, and let's show the subdivision and they'll literally divide that lot into one or two or three or four or five. Um, you can do 500, but that'll be inspirational. And if you do pull one of those off, let me know. Um, and then draw a lot, you'll be able to input the values or click on the map. So by, by clicking on the map option, you'll be able to trace and um, say with the aerials, you're able to see uh, um, the subdivision forming and you want to sort of trace that to do a quick, um, quick lot or you can input the values by referring to a dp so inputting the the, the bearings the distances etc and forming that lot um, line by line so let's right now click on the map and showcase how that looks so by clicking on the map on the left hand side you'll see um, a label you can make that label whatever you like it to be so you can name it lot 50 um, or lot 2 or lot 3 or leave it as the default um, address of the the master lot, and you do have to start at an address. The reason we have to start at an address is the system will still pull all the rules and regulations and context information, so you don't have to input those. And you'll see the benefit of that shortly. So if I do click on this, let's just use this fence line as a as a potential um, lot that is um, that is occurring. So here we've traced that lot. If I go to architectural view, you'll be able to see that it'll be clearer. And basically, you've got the square meter, the perimeter, and the segment lengths. On the left-hand side, it will form up the bearings, the distances, which you can also adjust. Um, so even if you're referring to a DP document that has these uh, measurements, it might be easier to just draw the rectangle um, this way. Um, you can press enter and enter in the measurement, et cetera, et cetera, just like you would use the measuring tool typically. Um, but on the left-hand side, and then you can edit it afterwards if you prefer that mode. So let's just say we've um, got this. Um, basically, you can you can basically edit this and sort of um, tweak that measurement or adjust or etc. Um, but what the system is now waiting um, for um, is for you to be able to provide some context in terms of what the frontage is, what the side is, and what the rear is. You can do that by clicking on the left-hand side near BA, which is basically boundary A, boundary B, boundary C. You can choose that in that way, or if it makes more logical sense, you can click on say BB here and say that's the frontage. And you'll see that it's labeled that front. And then you can click this as side, you can click the other as side, and then you're able to click BD as rear. So basically here you can see that all that's been populated and um, you can click on save. And basically you can now see that 
there's a lot here. So that'll behave as per a normal lot. So that's now looking a little bit more typical to what you're um, seeing on, on can I build. Um, it's now acting as a lot on the left-hand side. You've got your um, frontage information, your, you've got your council, et cetera, et cetera. And then now you can pick a design as per normal. So let's pick a design. And then that will place that design on the lot as you'll um, typically expect. So I'll just give that a few moments. And notice that the setbacks are all there. So I've said this many times before, um, I'm biased, but I do love what, what we do here in the application can I build. And I hope you can see now if a client walked in and they've um, either this is a proposed lot on a hypothetical scenario where this particular um, landowner is thinking about partitioning this um, into subdivision or it's already a subdivision that cannot build has yet to upload because it just got subdivided yesterday or it's a, a, a minor subdivision somewhere and you're now able to still work with that client and say hey let's um, let's see what we can do um, on your block of land so you can see here it's got all the context or information front side and reset setbacks um, and it's now working as per normal um, if you breach it'll tell you you're breaching um, if you generate a site plan or generate the site plan for this context, um, even if you click on the contours, it will show the contours. So if you had positioned this based on longitude and latitude or roughly correct, you're able to still do everything that you've come to expect with Can I Build and be able to start getting that information and showcase it on that block. So I'm, I'm genuinely hoping um, that this is hitting the mark in terms of what um, people have been expecting for this feature because I do know many of you have been very keenly waiting for uh, for this to be introduced. And basically, um, this is how that works. And it's meant to be simple. So you can imagine someone walking to a display or to the office and you're able to just simply say, well, what's your address? Where's the, um, where is it? Let's, um, let's go to it, let's draw it up if it's not there and start sort of showcasing how that looks, which I think is, um, pretty razzmatazz. Now, on top of that, um, what we're able to um, then do is um, showcase that in um, 3D if you wanted to, but before I get sort of overly excited and sort of um, showcase that, um, let's just go back to this view. And what I'll do is I'll quickly showcase um, another method of doing it, which is entering um, the bearings and distances. So let's just jump to another address. Picked a nice one earlier. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this will do because it looks like um, this is the formation of a subdivision. So basically, again, here I've picked a lot and let's just repeat that same process. Let's go to the wrench. And by instead of now um, clicking on the map, um, let's instead um, input the values. So if you click input the values on the left-hand side, again, it looks very familiar. It's going to say, get a starting position. Um, so let's just get a starting position there. And then it's basically waiting for you to add those um, details. So let's just say that is um, 45 meters um, at 45 degrees. Um, let's just make that 60 meters. So basically what you'll be doing here is entering those values from a DP. If the aerial is distracting, you can take that away and then you can simply start adding the next measurement. And then you can say that this is you know, 130 degrees, um, sorry, 130 degrees. And then this distance is 20 or whatever it might be. Now, if any of you have done um, this on um, architectural packages um, before, you'll know that um, potentially the bearing can go both ways. So is it 90 degrees that way or 90 degrees that the other way? Um, if you need to flip it, there's a flip tool here. So you can flip in which direction that bearing is going. So you can very easily get it exactly as you want. And then basically you'll just be adding points and then say, okay, this is another 47 meters. And then again here, this gives you an example, you can switch the bearing so you can have the lot as it's um, meant to be. 
and then you're able to sort of save that. And then again, in a similar way as when we drew um, the lot by tracing, um, you're able to now designate this is frontage, this is side, this is side, and this is rear. And basically save on that. And then basically that will have um, created that lot. So if I go to aerial view so I can see where I landed in the world, um, you can see here that lot there. And now you just repeat that same process, right? Um, you're able to go to designs and pick a design and place it. And you've got your setbacks. Again, you can pick contours, you can generate site plans, you can generate flyers. It operates exactly the same way. So I hope you can see from me doing it live that you know it's quite a simple process and it can be done quite rapidly. And basically it operates exactly as the normal system as if you had picked that lot.